I have behind me what was once a large brush pile and today we're going to talk about burning a brush pile safely. Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to have a fire. There's a big tree on the edge of our property that overhangs a roadway that goes back to a number of our neighbor's houses. Some of the branches were hanging a little low and so I decided to trim up that tree. As I trimmed that tree, there was more to trim than I realized. There were also additional trees that needed trimming and so I continued to trim and I ended up with four or five truckloads full of branches that I put into this pile. I wasn't able to burn this pile for a number of weeks because the weather had been very dry and there was a burn ban in the area. The other day I found out that the burn ban was being lifted due to the amount of precipitation we had had recently. And in order to construct this fire and have it on my property, it needed to be a certain size and I also needed to notify the emergency communication services. Here we call it KITCOM. Uh, so I called KITCOM and I told them that I was going to be having a bonfire as well as burning in a burn barrel some other items. Uh, they took down my address and they were recording the phone call is what I assume. They asked my name and I gave them that. And at that point they said, go ahead and have your fire. This is mostly so that if somebody else calls in and says, hey, I see a fire, that they can say, we already know about it and everything's okay. I needed to have a source of water by the fire at all times. So I did have the pump running and I had an active hose uh, that was pumping water next to the fire the whole entire time. Now the wind at the time of having this brush pile burn was faster than ideal. If you are starting a brush pile that is really dry, that is going to most likely erupt quickly into flame, it's better to light your pile on the downwind side. This will give the fire some time to work against the wind and to burn the pile slower. If you were to light the pile on the upwind side, the wind would carry that fire, feeding it oxygen, and would erupt the pile into flames, uh, totally making a larger fire, making a bigger risk for it to spread. Now before I started this fire, I did go around the grass. Uh, the ground was already pretty moist, but I took the hose and I wet down all around the fire. And then I did use some liquid fire starter, a mixture gasoline and diesel fuel together. If you have ever fought a wildland fire, uh, as I have uh, as a volunteer uh, wildland firefighter, you uh, mix uh, diesel and gasoline into a drip torch to help start back burns or burn certain areas that need to be burned for safety reasons. And typically you'll do a 50-50 mix, so you'll have 50 gasoline and 50 diesel. Now if the temperatures are higher and the humidity is lower, you would probably want to do a higher mixture of diesel fuel, maybe all the way up to 70% diesel fuel and 30% gasoline. And just remember that it's always best to try to start a fire first by you know, using matches or lighter, something small like that. Get the fire going really small and let the fire naturally grow more. Or if you do have like a torch and you're proficient with that, you could use a torch to start a fire. But really uh, using gasoline to start a fire is extremely dangerous. I do have a relative that was sent to the hospital uh, due to um, too much fuel that was used when starting a bonfire. And so if you are going to use uh, a liquid starting uh, fluid, always start off with less. Less is always better to start off with. You, you can put a little bit of that mixture fuel down uh, like I did for this bonfire 
get it going and then it'll take over the rest of the fire uh, pile naturally. Uh, there's no need to climb on top of the pile and pour gasoline everywhere. There's a ton of crazy YouTube videos out there that you can watch. Uh, just people really just being stupid and a lot of people have been sent to the hospital for doing stuff like that. So just be really safe when you're starting a fire. Um, if you can start it really small and let it grow from there, that is really the best way to do it. Using my liquid fire starter, I got this fire going fairly quickly and as it burned I just continued to monitor it. I had a shovel here on hand and I also had the hose running. As the fire burnt its way down I gradually moved uh, sticks and logs closer to the middle so that they would burn out completely. As you can see we have uh, some branches that remain. They were the larger branches and they'll probably get burnt in the next fire that I have. Hauling all of this organic material to the dump would have been uh, quite expensive for me. I also don't have a trailer and it would have taken me uh, several loads with the truck going back and forth. And so this was the most efficient uh, way to get rid of all those branches. And we do live outside of city limits and so it is legal for us to have this fire. And so if you have uh, that ability, uh, just make sure you're being safe in how you burn and being aware of your surroundings and making sure that your uh, emergency services that are local there know that you're having a fire just in case somebody does happen to see the smoke and call in that they can say they already know about it. This is my pup, Chief. He is five years old. He's a black Labrador retriever. Good job. Chief, what are you gonna do? If you're new to this channel, my name is Cody and we recently bought this property with a house on it to be our home base. And I'm starting to share our property projects with you. Push that subscribe button all the way in if you haven't done so already and click the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. Hats off to you.